Pat Love with Pat's Two Cents. This is a continuation. I'm getting the highlights of her interview. And I want you to hear some further detail of how God pricked her heart to have a burden against racism. Uh, I was, um, I belonged to a Southern Baptist church. Uh, I was saved in that church. Um, and I was thrown out of that church in my early 20s, which was back in the 60s, because I taught that racism was wrong in a Sunday school class. Mm. I, I was asked to leave that church. And the one, the elder of the church, the deacon of the church that came to me and talked to me about it the first time, was my grandfather, and he said, you, you can't say these things. And I said, I can't not say these things. And so he came back with other deacons and they asked me. So it's, it's been a process, but then when my youngest son was in uh, the, the seventh grade, he brought home with him a, a young black male child that was in his class and he came in and um, my children have um, always believed that with my mouth I could make anything right you know I could speak and he came in and John uh, the, the African American child's name he stayed outside and Mark came in and Mark said to me mama I've, I've got a friend and you've got to help him and when we talked John was a big strong athletic child and if someone called him a, a word if they called him nigger if they said something then he just got mad fought and Mark said he's going to kill somebody and end up in jail you got to talk to him. you got to help him. And because of the circumstances, he was the child of a single mother, and her job was second shift, it evolved in that he stayed with us from Sunday night when his mother went to work until Friday afternoon when he would go home and then be with his mother and his sisters in the afternoons and the weekend, and she would bring him back. So he lived with us. And he would, we would get threats uh, because we lived in a white neighborhood and John was living with us. Uh, Mark, it reached a point where Mark would be more angry than John would at the things that would happen at school because they loved each other. They cared about each other. We had uh, one bed in, in their bedroom so they they traded it out. One slept on the floor and the other one had the bed and the next night they reversed, you know. But through him, because he constantly had to fight. He, he wouldn't do anything, but he had to fight. And through this, I really got a taste of what, of what your people go through. I, I didn't understand how he felt, but I got a taste of it. And the lesson that I was trying to give him, that Mark kept saying, Mama, talk to him, you gotta, you know, was, John, if they say something to you and it causes a reaction in you, that even if you whip them, they've still controlled what you've done. They've still been the one that caused the reaction or the reaction in you. And through this, but, uh, you know, so many stories of, of injustice for him and, uh, and the, the things that we went through as a family because of our association, just simply because we loved him. All of these things. See, God doesn't set you on a path and, and not prepare you for that path. So all of these things, being different myself, um, being struck down by my own people because of what I believe, and then loving someone. I'm not sure any white person could ever enter into this battle 
and be on this side of, of the firing line unless they love someone of color because most of us isolate ourselves. We can get up in the morning, go to work, go shopping, go do everything in our life that has to be done without coming in contact with you. So unless we love someone, we don't know what you think, what you feel, 